Hey guys, welcome to the Center Bounce. In today's video, we're going through the players that you guys should bring in your teams, their break evens, and the ones that you guys probably should get out as well. Stay tuned. Go. We've said it on other podcasts, we've said it on other episodes. Round one, round two are the best, the most crucial weeks in Supercoach because they're the play, you know, the times before generally. When the players go up and down in price, we kind of get a hint and get an idea of the guys we need to get rid of, which premiums we need to sideways or upgrade. And then the rookies and the mid prices we must bring in. A lot of these guys I didn't have in my team last week. I didn't even have them in my calculations. Sneaky yeah. hundred just kind of comes in, mate. Get on board. 100%. Now, the first two rounds, um, the first at the start definitely was to really sort of correct some of the mm -hmm. big premiums that you have because come this round, this is the absolute pinnacle of where you're really going to make sure that you nail all those rookies on their bubbles. Uh, most of them are now popping off from this point onwards, making us money every single week. And if you miss out on some really important ones, then you really could be left behind. The buyers have sort of, staggered them a little bit some are going up in price mm -hmm. earlier than others like your alex sextons for example of the world yep. who have an earlier buy and then you've got others that have sort of been delayed a week someone like a jack carroll for example we're going to be talking about in this video um and so you really need to make sure that you look at these guys and not just simply pick players based on a low break even you also have to pick someone who is actually going to be a good player for you and be able to continue playing decently so they can make yep. you more money moving forward. It's, it's one thing to get someone who could be quick money maker in the short term, but if they're no good, then ultimately you're going to have to trade them out sooner rather than later and they won't make you as much money as some of those genuine gun cash cows. Yeah, and one of the big things to remember before we go through this list there's no way that everyone's going to have every one of these players as long as you've got, you know, your six guys in the midfield who are making you a lot of money. Your two or three guys in the forward line doing similar. Your rookies in the back line, you know, there's probably one of them that you really need this week. Um, as long as you've got these players, it doesn't matter if I've got this guy and Joe's got this other one. We're both making money. You just need to make sure that you're making money. A big thing is to remember heading into next week, Everyone should be finishing their team on about 14 plus million dollars. And the rookies in the first, you know, when rookies debut round one, round two, whatever, um, they're the best rookies for the year generally. Throughout the season, we'll get one or two that might pop off, you know, your Samson Ryan's, whatnot, halfway through the season. But this is the time now. You need to load up on these guys because if they're good enough to come in, they're good enough to play straight away. And, and you know, they're the ones that generally make a lot more money. 100%. And on that note, we will flip on over and have a look at these players. You just simply come to Players, to the Players tab, and then if you have Supercoach Plus, you will just click up here and then select Buy a Breakeven, and then it will give you from the lowest breakeven to the highest. And, of mm -hmm. course, is it any surprise from those who have watched our trade video that we've both brought in this man. And according to Supercoach, he is the number one cash cow coming out of round three. What do you reckon? Yep. Yeah, it looks very, very good. That score of the one, I think it's 128 in round one as well, just like chucked him, up the, chucked him up the order. So he did finish it off with an 87 last round, which is fantastic. And at 224K, if he's averaging 80, you're laughing, right? The big thing to remember is round two, the scores from round two are is a lot better than round one or even round three, depending obviously a Harvey Thomas scored well last week. It's his third game because after next week, all the scores they played in their first game are out. So even if a player yeah. had a bad score first, cool, a couple more big scores, but Massimo's in my team. I know Massimo's in your team, Joe. And with our depleted defense, there's no real excuse not to, unless you went, you know, six premium um, defenders to start off with. Or you're just looking to just sort of take out the the, the cash making and maybe just trade in just straight out a, a primo mid a primo yeah. defender for example like he didn't have for example Luke Ryan and then rather than going like a young to a to a Massimo you might have just gone young straight up to Ryan 
and then maybe are foregoing someone like a Massimo, Dam Massimo D'Ambrosio. But um, I honestly think that the money that he's going to make is, and plus the scoring on field, plus his best 22, and he plays a really good role. He ticks a lot of the good boxes, what we want from a cash cow. So Mass gets a massive tick of approval. Then move to Oli Dempsey. We've sort of spoken about him in the preseason. He looked wonderful against Essendon, mm -hmm. and I did want to have him on my bench, but I foregoed him. I, I let him go just so that I could have a facilitator trade to get Ipkiss up to Massimo. Yep. Oli Dempsey has looked really well playing as a high half forward for the Cats. He scored a 59 last week without kicking any goals. Mm -hmm. So you would imagine that that 59 is his floor. And for if you're going to get a floor of a about 60 from someone who's priced at 148. That could be pretty damn good. So Oli Dempsey should be in a lot of people's calculations. Big J. Yeah, I know I wanted to get him last week. I just couldn't facilitate it with the cash. Potentially I could have. Um, I got scared off a little bit by the 59 last week, so it is something to watch out for. But guys who are kind of reliant on goals in the forward line, things like that, it just doesn't work out every single week as we kind of saw with the Sexton in the back line. So, yeah, you've got him fantastic. No early buy, which is a massive plus because I know I've got Heaney coming up. I've got uh, Hogan this week. We've got Flanders this week. So there's a few players that are going to miss games. Yeah, 100%. He could come in really clutch. He's got, he's got, he's got the Hawks this week as well. So yep. you never know. He could have a really good one. And I did mention this guy right off the bat. He... Coming off his buy, so otherwise he would have already had a price rise. But for those who didn't have him, that buy might have bailed them out. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think so as well. Um, the scoring's there, Joe. He's so good. Is. Pat Carroll is just like Sam Walsh incarnate. And yes, Sam Walsh is coming back, but unfortunately they also lost Doherty in round one as well, or round zero. So, yeah, it's... Um, kid's really really good and i'm glad i picked him up earlier or at least started him earlier because i have to yeah. make a lot of trains this week and i made myself not be in a position where i had to pick one player over another yeah i i, I think that was a very smart move and I'll, i like jack carroll's game he looks really good he's very strong over the football and a lot of what he does is contested in, in nature so he doesn't need to have the ball a lot in order to get real good value for each for each disposal that he has and that's sort of the good thing that i like about jack carroll um if you can afford to get him in then i think he's definitely going to be worthwhile and make you money um sooner rather than later uh, this is a kid, though, Big J, that you had some reservations about coming off the preseason game where he was played back pocket. I think those reservations are gone now, yes? Well, I brought him in last week, and I was very, very happy that I did because he scored me a 95. So thanks, mate. Um, Colby McKercher, yeah, just a fantastic young man. Obviously warranted that pick two in the draft. We know the comparisons a lot of people are having to Zach Merritt as well, and yeah. Very, very, very good player. So he's going to make us a lot of cash. Looks like he's in line to get DPP as well for the back line. So a lot of people might, you know, people might have him as a D7 swing or even just a guy you can keep in your back line for, you know, until the second round of buys almost when your team's finished. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I agree. I agree. Uh, I love it how I had more faith in him and his role than you did. And well, you're, North well, Melbourne. you're allowed to make trades in Super Coach Joe. I've done that. I spent some trades. I fixed around my team. I didn't keep Jai Clark like you did. Um, and then, yeah, it worked out all right for me. It did. It did. Uh, Jeremy Sharp, uh, a lot of us, he didn't really have a good showing in the preseason. Obviously, he was coming off of illness, um, yep. which obviously disrupted it. But from all of the preseason research and the reports that we've been put, that we were following up with, Jeremy Sharp was their best runner, their best performer, locked on a wing with very solid job security. And we've seen it so far to start the season. He's got an average of 67. Mm -hmm. And for someone at 123.9K sitting on the bench with no early buy, chugging away with some 60 scores, that is really, really good. And he is a, a very solid cash cow for us. Not going to go extra, you know, extra exploding very quickly with cash, but he will chug away very nicely on our bench. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And 
as I said at the start of this video, right? It's these guys that we had in our teams at, during the preseason. We knew all the reports on him. He's probably the best runner at Frio. We saw him on the weekend versus North Melbourne, just running up and down and up and down and up and down and being used as that you know transition type player. Obviously, that's what the ring wing role is, but we're not expecting huge scores. Give us a 65. That still gets him to, you know, middle 300K. It's all we need from these type of players, especially guys on the bench. 100%. And what I also loved about his game is that when there's nothing obvious to kick to, he'll just bomb it high and long along the wing, and that's those are effective kicks every yep. time. They look out for him because he can run quite far too. Yeah. So on your Jeremy Sharp, uh, if you haven't got him, he could be no very problem. worthwhile to have on your bench just simply by virtue of his job security um, yep. being rock solid, I think. So Jeremy Sharp, tick of approval. Sam Darcy isn't on his bubble, having only played the one game, but it was one heck of a game. His break-even's already negative 61. I mean, he's already kept Lob out of a job, I think, for the rest of the season. So don't bring Sam Darcy in now, guys. It happened to Bonner, happened to a few of these other guys. People went early on Jared Lyons thinking he was going to play again. He obviously hasn't been named. Grab Sam Darcy next week because we know there are a few um, players, you know, round five, round six buys that, you know, are pretty good uh, downgrade options too. So Sam Darcy's a wait. James Jordan probably to Sam Darcy next week for me. Or Sam Berry. We'll see what happens. Now, uh, you never want to go early on a rookie. You never mm -hmm. want to go early on a rookie. But if there was a rookie that you could go early on, I feel like Sam Darcy could be the one. He's playing West Coast at Marvel this week. He's got 109 on Gold Coast. But What's gonna he going to do field? to West Coast? Are, are you going to put him on field, though? That's that's the thing. Yes, like, you could. I on think. Field. Hey, Joe. All right. He's got 109 on against on Gold Coast. That's true. I, I would just hate to bring him in and then somehow... Like he has a niggle or something and then misses next week. And then it's like, oh, I no longer have a downgrade target for one of my players. True. That's why you never go early. But I'm saying like, if though, if you if. had some big plans that you wanted to kick, that you, wanted, that you had to do this week, and you could only afford a 123K rookie in the forward line, then mm -hmm. Sam Darcy is your boy. Otherwise, the 99% of you who don't apply, that, that doesn't apply to, get him next week. Um, Harvey Thomas still has a break even of negative 53, despite oh, having God. risen in price because he had a pop. He popped off at 107. And that's sort of what Big J, what I was mentioning when I said earlier in the video, pick players who are actually good footballers and have good yep. and, and look, look really good. Because Harvey Thomas is one that both mm -hmm. Big J and I thought was really impressive in the preseason and looked really good. And it's no surprise to us that he was capable of punching out a really good score in round mm -hmm. in round three. Mm -hmm. Or round two. Yeah. The, um, the thing that's gonna save him is that is that 107. Um the inflated price is definitely gonna kick a lot of people out. And he just didn't look good in the first game. Like sometimes you just have games like this where a player has a really good game, and yes, you can ride that 107 for a while. But if he comes out and scores another 40 next week, cool. Okay, well, he's made you like 30K after you brought him in. You could miss out on the Sam Darcy. If you had to downgrade two players next week, 100% chuck Harvey Thomas in there. Lose a bit of money that you would have maybe instead got. The DPP is fantastic as well, but there are better options next week. Yeah, for sure. Cadman, I think most people already had Cadman. If you didn't have him... You're kicking yourself a little bit, I feel. Um, I yeah, I don't know. Uh, would you get him in now at 194K? There is a lot of money still to make, but that inflated price, like we talked about Harvey Thomas not being great. Cadman, it's a little bit different because of key position player in the way that GWS play. If you had to, maybe, but no, no thanks. Um, and don't be one of those people that are going to offload him this week either. Cool. Oh, he's made some money. I can offload him to Jack Carroll Bank 7. This kid's going to make you a lot more money. He might even get to 400K. If you got rid of him, you're going to be kicking yourself, mate. His break even still negative 52. Don't and be I silly. Know. I've seen people get rid of him, though, and it's just it just hurts my brain. 
Uh, Darcy Wilson, all a negative 51 break even. He hasn't scored a 90. He's only no. averaging 63, but he's got the Bombers this week at, um, you know, so could do really well. He could do really well against us. We tend to concede a lot of points to opposition teams, so he yep. could pop off. Yeah, I mean, these are players that we said at the start of the video, right? The guys that we started are the ones that are generally going to do well, and they're the players who got picked up in the draft, ready-made, ready to go. Darcy Wilson with DPP really solves a lot of problems. Yes. If you don't have him, so if you, like, haven't... you have to get him in. But I, yes. I don't know anyone that doesn't have him in. Correct. Uh, Tom Powell, he's another one that we've traded in. He's not a cash oh cow as a rookie, but he's he's a gun. Yep. And he's 22. He just signed a two-year contract. North Melbourne love him. They love him in that midfield spot. I can go on and on and on about Tom Powell. I've heard some people say, oh, Tom Powell's not that great. Been looking at Twitter. Some people have said, hey, look, I've called on Tom Powell. I don't want him in my team. Look, that's up to you. That's personal preference. But with the negative 47 break even, even if he scores like an 80 or a 74 like he's projected to score this week, he's going to make you enough money. He's going to get to 400K, hopefully. He'd have to have a, a, a an average score this week and a complete stinker next week to like stifle his cash gen. Cool. We made a mistake. We've got 40 trades to start with. So it is what it is. But if he's not end up being a keeper, he's going to get us to 400K plus, And then that's all you really need for the price. Him plus a rookie could equal a Caleb Sarong or someone else that you just need in your team. Yep, exactly. 100%. Uh, Buku Kamis, he's highlighted because I this is obviously on, on my yeah. profile. I, I've got one Buku. Of few people, one of the few people yeah. that have Buku Kamis in their team. I'm very happy with this kid. Very happy with him. He's going to get that defensive DPP. He is playing against West Coast, so I don't know how much ball he's going to get playing in the back line. But, you know, hey, still, the defensive DPP will come in clutch, a negative 46 break even. If you didn't start him, is he someone that you have to trade in? Look, probably not, to be honest. Um, it seemed, you know, we haven't really had any injuries to our forward line bench. It's all been to the back line. So I don't yeah. really see any reason why you'd be looking to use a trade to get Buku Kamis in. If you've got him to start with like I did, very well done. But if you haven't got him, he's not going to hurt you on the on, in the long run. Yeah, I know a few people that have offloaded like a Sexton just due to that poor score last week. So maybe as a downgrade option. But as we said at the start of the video, right, you don't have to have all of the good scoring rookies. You just have a have to have to have enough to fix your cash generation. So Joe with Bukakamas, good pod move there. Um, he probably will never get dropped, and then yeah, we'll see how it goes. I oh, will see if he gets dropped or not. But um, mm. there's, there's a few players over there, the Bulldogs. I don't know. I'm a little bit worried about that job security. Yeah, Hopefully, yeah, we'll just make us some money and then trade them out later. Yeah, uh, Nay Smith, so. obviously not. Uh, Charlie Dean, obviously not. Jared Lyons. Yeah. <laughs> Jared Lyons. I'm unlucky for those people that, you know, brought him in after the big score in round one, or I don't know how many people started him, but yeah, he's a watch and see. When he comes in, he might be an okay option for us, but at the moment, he's been omitted, and sadly, uh, unless he somehow ends up being the emergency and playing, like, from the first five minutes into the game, um, I'm not going to say failed pick, Joe, but yeah, just kind of sucks. Failed pick. I'm saying it now, a big day. Failed pick. Uh, Riley Sanders, I think everybody should own this kid. Um, absolute jet. If oh, you haven't people, got him. I think it was like 80% start, yeah. Yeah. If you haven't got him, get him in. Uh, Matt Roberts, if you haven't, you know, he's already had a price rise. So he's at the 225. Uh, that's probably a bit too much, you reckon? I, I think there's a world where you can still bring him in. If we're bringing in Massimo as a potential option, Matt Roberts coming off a 94 from last week, really like that's his third price rise, right? Oh, sorry, his his third score, which means that that's going to be in there for the next three weeks versus a round two, which is only going to be in there two weeks, and then a round one, which is out like next week. So there's still an opportunity for him to make a lot of money. If you don't have him, he's going to get DPP. He's going to be playing halfback for that club, looking okay. So. There's a world where I see some people jumping on him. If you know, if you've got a Sam Berry that you're not happy with and you're worried that he's going to get dropped, Matt Roberts might be your guy. I think he's only forty percent owned as well, so it's a lot of people that don't have him. Beautiful. That's music to my ears. 
Uh, Jack Billings, you might be thinking, why does this guy still have a negative break even despite him doing pretty badly last week? Well, it's because as we're talking about how the first game, if you had a really good first game, that's yep. now dropped after your third one. Jack yep. Billings was the opposite. Jack Billings had a terrible first game because he was the sub, and then he's had a stinker. Now, that's dropped off now, having played three games, and his mm. average is now actually not too bad. He's now got that He's now got that big score in his cycle without that terrible one last uh, that happened in round one, in round zero. So Jack mm. Billings still has a really good break-even. After this week, though, that 100 score is going to drop, and then you're going to see his break-even go up a bit higher. So Jack Billings mm. could be in my trade plans next week in order to facilitate getting that uber premium that i mentioned in the trade video so jack billings if you haven't got him don't you dare try trading him in now that would be a waste yeah. of a trade uh, depending on how he goes versus port adelaide obviously if he scores big again then it's going to reset himself somewhat but i think most people who picked him at 240k were probably expecting him to make 100k maybe a tiny bit more and it's looking like that's what it's going to be in his projection so Congratulations for those people. But if you're trading him in now, you're not going to get that 100K. You're going to oh. get 28K less. You'd have to be very convinced that Jack Billings is going to have a big game against Port Adelaide. Otherwise, it's a bit of a failed pick. Like for 30K more, you can get Tom Powell or 30, exactly. 40K more. Like, yeah, it's not great. Uh, Toby Pink, key defender, did mm -hmm. really well. Almost, almost half of this, or a little bit, a little bit over half of his fifty-eight was scored by halftime. He yep. was absolutely killing it up until that point, and then sort of oh, disappeared. North Melbourne, a bit like the rest of the team, yeah, yeah. North Melbourne completely died. They were just letting people run through the middle, and then it just looked sloppy. Um, really parallel and a big difference between them and like a, a West Coast that they were competitive at least for most of the game. North Melbourne just fell apart. Um, and our defense, we're just letting goals go through. So Toby Pink, you've got a Caulfield, you've got a Gibkiss, you don't want to spend up on a player. He is an option. I don't think he gets dropped. I think him and Callan Dawson look okay in the back line at the moment. But yeah, you're probably getting a 50-odd average out of him. Which for some people, that's fine. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, all right. And with that... Yeah, I've seen a look, lot of people is. jump on Bramble this week. So as yes. a player that people haven't picked, having DPP is really good. Um, still a negative break even and seems to have a really crucial spot playing halfback at the Dogs. Uh, but you know Bevo, after a few losses and whatnot, things could change. And he's more of an inflated price versus a Massimo and stuff as well. So if it works out for you, fantastic. But I don't know how much ball is going to be coming out of that West Coast. So out of that Dogs back line um, versus West Coast. So take the gamble if you want. Yeah, uh, I flirted with the idea of Bramble instead of a Massimo, but I just felt that just the Bevo factor was enough to put me off him because Bramble does actually look like he's got a very decent role. Um, he's even taken some kick-ins. I think he had like five kick-ins in the first game and then he had a kick-in mm -hmm. last week um, against the Suns when they torched the Suns. And so he's had a couple of really good games. So, look, if you're really bullish on this guy, I'm not going to say no. Um, because I think he's, I think he could very well be worth it. But of course, yeah. you need to, I suppose, keep an eye on the Bevo factor because that really is gonna. That you can't trust anything what happens with that guy. Yeah. Um. And, and the crazy thing too is like you're paying two ninety k. What are you gonna get? Like a four hundred k player out of him. So, with the average price of, of a trade being a hundred k, it's an okay option for now if you're really depleted in the back line. But yeah, not the best option, I think, this week. Yeah. Fair enough. Now, I think we what we can do is we can also sort of filter the price to really try and get some premium, some premiums over yeah. over what four fifty k, you reckon, or yeah, over five hundred? So. And I think four fifty is good with um Matt Crouch and a few of these other guys going to be really good scorers for us. Yeah, have a look at some of these options. I've seen a few people if we start from the top. Wanting to bring in a Jeremy McGovern, he's going to jump up to about oh, almost 520k, depending on how he goes in the game versus the Bulldogs. If you're looking for a quick flip, you don't have enough money maybe to 
you know, grab one of those super expensive Tom Stewart's or Dan Houston types. If you haven't spent any trades, I'm not saying it's for us, Joe, but if you haven't spent any trades, it, it is an option. No. You it don't is. trade in risk. No, you don't trade in injury risk. You've got to survive one game. Like, one game is okay. What get no. play, play one or two games, and then you can grab in an Uber Primo with some extra money. It, it can work. Um, What's your thoughts on bringing in Luke Jackson? Obviously, he's missed out on the two big scores, but still a super high break even. The guy's going to end up being 650K. He looks really good. Um, If you didn't have Luke Jackson, are you bringing him in? And, and and you don't have to do corrections. Like maybe you grabbed a Massimo or something last week, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Sean Darcy is back in two to three weeks. Yeah. If you haven't picked, if you haven't picked Jackson till now, it's because you're death you're fading him. It means you've committed to fading him, I feel. Because there's no point in trading him in now, I feel. When those points are gone, this is, uh, in, in my mind, that is the definition of point chasing. Yes, you might trade him in now, but those points that he scored last week and the week before, you're not getting them. They're gone. Yeah. You're getting the Luke Jackson from here till uh, and moving forward, from now and forwards. You're not getting the Jackson that scored those points before. Jackson... Is a great selection. We did a spotlight video on him as someone who's absolutely viable when Sean Darcy isn't in the team. But yep. Sean Darcy is going to return, and you've now got two less games out of Jackson before Darcy comes back, They're, thereby reducing the value that you're getting from Jackson by two games. For me, I know that, Dar that Darcy's going to come back eventually, and the fact that I didn't start Jackson means that I've committed myself to betting against him. That's it, yep. it is what it is. And I'm not going to now cry over spilt milk. It's a decision that we've all knowingly made, understanding that with Darcy in the side, Jackson is nowhere near as good as he would be otherwise. For those who started him, congratulations. For those who didn't like me, for me, I just think it's best to let it go, let that ship sail, um, and focus your efforts on improving everywhere else in your team rather than cementing 547k into Luke Jackson. Hopefully yeah. he has a tough time against Rob this week, hopefully. I, I, I've seen some people have an idea of maybe they'll offload Grundy and they had a Luke Jackson or bringing a Jackson in mm -hmm. potentially as that spot. Then maybe it could work. Um, but, yeah, it, it is a bit risky. If you haven't spent any trades already or have all the good players, 100%. But you're only probably going to get two or three good more weeks out of him depending on if they rest, um, you know, Sean Darcy or not. Or, or yep. ease him in. I can see a world where they ease him in. They could ease him in, yes, for sure. But I've already lost those games. I've already lost those games. Those games are behind me. And all I can do is slap myself and then move on. It is what yep. it is. Yep. Um, don't chase setters... points, guys. Don't, don't chase right. points. Whenever you chase right. points, things just don't work out. Yep. Setterfield's got a knee niggle subject to fitness oh. test. So we just can't catch a break, honestly. We, it's ridiculous. Jesse Hogan, I know you got him, Big J. Um, yeah. Obviously on I'm, the buy this week. So that's, yeah. not, that's not moving anywhere. No, I'm, I'm keeping him for a couple more weeks. We spoke about it in our trades video. I'm going to keep him. I think he's going to be okay. Hopefully he's got a, I think he's got a few more good games against defenders coming up. Um, GWS has three or four guys that play through there as well. And Hogan can be used as that link up player. So a lot of people are jumping off at 468K. I reckon he can get us to at least 500. And then it's him plus a rookie at a minimum. Grab myself a premium in the midfield. So if that's what it turns out to be, then I'll suck it up there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Jordan Clark is next. I actually yeah. like this guy as, a, as another option if you want to downgrade a Hayden Young type. Um, yeah. Because he's playing, he's he's playing that role. Uh, he's taking some kick-ins. He's playing half back or mm -hmm. back pocket, if you look at what DFS says. But he's racking the ball up at will, and he's a very good ball user. They recruited him across from the Cats um, for good reason. He's looked really, really good. I just don't know if that role persists. 
plus with all of the carnage that's happened in their back line. Yep. But I, I think there are certainly worse options than Jordan Clark. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's just the pod move. And sometimes pod moves work out. He's the right age, similar to a Tom Powell we spoke about before, right? The right age is breaking out. Frio's back line's definitely developing and changing things up. They want speed through there. Jordan Clark offers that. And for the four games I've watched of Frio so far, he just looks good. Like he does. He, he just looks good. So, you know, I wouldn't say no, but it's not the most popular option, I think. Uh, for us that have a Nick Martin and they don't want to upgrade, sideways to Matt Crouch. Bank that 20K. Matt Crouch, a 121 average. If we had started the season, if we had started before round one and said, Matt Crouch, 121 average, you'd be saying, cool, no worries, jump on Matt Crouch. Um, it's been a revelation. He might not hold up because of the body, but he's been looking good, and he's pushed guys like Jordan Dawson, who Joe's not happy about, and we'll talk about next in the um, players to get rid of section of this. Yeah, it, it, it is what it is. If you start Matt Crouch, well done. Just yeah, well done. You're happy. Just keep, you're an, happy. just keep an eye on what's going to change because something has to change with that Adelaide midfield mix. The way that they've been playing and the way they've been under the media a little bit scrutiny, you never know. There could, they could be a midfield personnel shift and Matt, Matt Crouch, I think, should still be in there. He's got great hands. Um, and if you haven't, the squad father... Um, had a nice little deep dive about Matt Crouch as well. Uh, Papley's a piece of shit. Stuff you, Papley. <laughs> work, working his Don't mouth over that. time. Yeah. Honestly, they're, they're, they're not the Sydney Swans. They're the Sydney no. Wusses or Whingers. Honestly. <laughs> Caleb Sarong, uh, I'll cut myself yeah. there without saying any more. Caleb he, Sarong, he, I've traded him in this week. Yeah, he's a very, very good option. If you've got some money, I decided to go to Luke Ryan instead. Maybe that doesn't work out. Um, Caleb Sarong could end up at 670k and I might actually have a look at changing it Joe, just to see kind of what it looks like in my team because the more and more I see of this guy I don't know if he gets stopped and it's really scary when you say that Scott Father jumped on him and Luke Bryan last week jumped up the rankings uh, a lot of people have started Sarong or you know, like yourself brought him in yeah if you have the money a lot of us are getting rid of these guys who have sub 500k but around the mark Aiden Young to Caleb Sarong is only 100K. Like, you can do it pretty easy. So the biggest thing is just having a midfield spot free this year and shoring exactly. up the rest of your players. That's the thing. He's he's a, he's a definite luxury trade for a lot of people, I think. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Willem Drew. He's 114 for Willem Drew. Wow, that's surprising. Yeah. yeah. Um, just the, I think Horn Francis being out, like, mm. has, definitely, has definitely changed a lot. Um, didn't have a great score round one, but as we saw from last week, round two, a 144. So he's definitely affecting wines a little bit. And maybe it is just the year that William Drew comes through. I know he's always been, you know, around the mark, but never that good player in the back in Port's midfield. So it's an option. It, it, it's an option. I wouldn't do it. At this point, we're locking in cemented players or guys that are going to make a lot of money. William Drew is not going to be a keeper in your team. So why bring him in now if Four weeks down the track, you're going to have to get rid of him. Yeah, uh, so it's pretty similar to Harris Andrews. I think it's just going to depend on matchups as well. Yeah. If he's able to peel off and take some intercept marks, playing that yeah. Sicily role off half in in defence for for the it Brisbane Lions, just like bomb it forward. Like cool, if the if it Collingwood's just going to kick it forward every time blindly, well, he's going to score well. Um, when sure. when they start doing other things, he gets found out pretty easy. <laughs> Yep, 45 break even. I said, Heedy, I need a Heedy. You know what's funny? In like two Heedy. weeks of scoring, he's already jumped up 100k. So people could have had him in their teams. So 60, 61, it was 480. But still, it feels like 100k. And if we didn't have him, we told you get on the Heaney train. Looks good. Um, Taylor Adams could affect a few different things, but. He ends up 600K, averaging a 120, like he's a forward keeper. So, yeah, we'll see what happens there. I need a Heaney. Would you bring Heaney in now? Uh, now? Like, we've spoken about Jackson being not being an option. If you didn't own Heaney and you know how good his run is over the next couple of games, 
He's got what Richmond now who give up a lot of points to midfielders. And then I think he's got West Coast. West Coast. West Coast. Who, West, Coast. West Coast who don't have a great midfield either. Like if you were assuming he was going to be a keeper, is there a world where someone trades up and gets Heaney in this week? Like if you had Hogan, uh, if you had a Hogan and plus 90k gets you a Heaney, like would you do it? Now it's again with you're not supposed to chase points. You're not yeah, meant to you, chase you, points. He's going to be a keeper. You're not chasing points if he's going to be a keeper. Correct. So that's what I'm saying. Like you don't chase points, but if he um is 545, Luke mm. Jackson's 547. If we're saying no to Jackson and yes to Heaney just because of 2k difference, um he's a but little you're bit saying Jackson's not going to be a keeper. That's that's the that's the big difference, right? True. True. But you never know. With our forward lines being so as depleted as they are, maybe Jackson mm-hmm. does become a keeper. I don't know. If that's if they're true. gonna if they're gonna rest Sean Darcy more forward than ever before, but I don't think they will. Because I think Jackson's too good of a forward um compared to Darcy. So yeah, I don't know. I reckon mm-hmm. Heaney I just don't like paying up for players. The value was there before, and now mm-hmm. I think you're just gonna get a fair price out of him. Oh yeah, he'll get. If you haven't got him, he's gonna pop off the next two weeks. Just jump on the Heaney train. Yeah, you're paying up sixty k more. So what? It is what it is. Just join us. Join us and have fun. Uh, Mm -hmm. Nazaya, um, he really could push top six, man. He could. Yep. Yep. He's one of those players. You look at him and he just looks so good that there's a real option where a lot of people can jump on him. Um, he, he's killed Bonner. He's made Sicily go to the midfield. Um, not Sicily, Sinclair Sicily. go to the midfield. Sorry, S- Sinclair go to the midfield. So, yeah, there, there, there's an option and a time where you can jump on him. Um, this is the time to do it, though. If you've got a Hayden Young, Hayden Young to Nazai, I don't think there's an option. Yep. Yep, for sure. Uh, Luke Ryan over here with a break-in of 54. Yeah, if, he's you, if you're going to get a primo, he's the one, yeah? yeah? Yeah, him or Houston, depending on what you... You know, it, it's more preference, but Luke Ryan has showed us over the last few weeks that his ceiling's a lot higher. And especially in that first game, I think he scored like a 170. Like, that's just monster. So I don't know if Houston's going to go 170 anytime soon. He needs some gold half of the siren to do, to do that. Mm. Uh, Jack's deal with a 61 makes sense. He's... he's, bre- he's He's already priced quite low mm. to begin with. So yep. for him to have a 61, um, I suppose, break even is not too bad, even if he's not going to outprice you anytime soon. So um, he could do really well against Essendon this week. Um, mm. So I'm definitely there's definitely worse selections than Jack Steele. Absolutely. Yeah. Is. yeah, definitely. And I know a few people are looking at potentially just going flat bottom price, Hayden Young to Massimo which frees up that money to go potentially someone to a Jack Steele. So it, it, it does work out. 120 average. He was, you know, a top eight pick a couple of years ago before all these injuries and stuff happened. 120 hopefully gets him into that mark again. We'll just wait and see. But definitely, as Joe says, he might take a couple of weeks before his break even starts to really hurt. Um, jump on him now if you want to. At least consider him to be an upgrade, if not this week you know, rounds five, six, seven, when, you know, more of our Melbourne, Sydney type players start to mature in price. Yeah. Uh, this guy, thankfully, has a buy, oh, um, mate, which means I'm that we're not going to go up to, So we can get him next week, potentially. Um, yeah. Now, he has had a great run playing against weaker opposition, um, which can help facilitate his running gun from the, from the, the back of the stoppage. Is he going to score 117 average for the year as a defender? Look, it's unlikely. It's not not too many defenders can go 117. But he looks like he's going to be a top six. And for 544.8K, that's a very good price to pay next week. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Sometimes you have to take opportunities. And I think with Sicily scoring being going to fluctuate as much as I think it will do, depending on the matchup and how he ends up playing. 
I think there's a space for a Lockie Whitfield to jump in there. He could easily average a 115 plus, which, you know, maybe it's not D1, but could be a D6 for us. And at 554K, a D6 isn't terrible. Yep, exactly. And then number 20, right on the dot, we've got Zach Butters, um, 68 break even. I know... A lot of people, almost everyone had him in the preseason sides, but then when the ankle injury happened, I know a lot of people were nervous about it or worried oh, about it and jumped sad. off that, him. That 174, man, 175 people, and he's, he's got a good run this week. I know George had a bit of um, a bit of a stink on his latest video talking about not owning butters, and it's like, yep, his run for the next few weeks, not bad, not bad. So, yeah. There, get him now if you can. Hayden Young plus 115k, chuck him in your team. Similar to Sarong if you can do it. But sometimes you've just got to bank it. You know the the best thing about best 18 is that there's real opportunities for you to make weird trades like this. That in a regular season at this point in time you can't do. So maybe I don't want Luke Ryan. I jump on Sarong and just have Massimo and have no premiums in my back line. It could happen. Um, but I've got to make you got to make those decisions as quick as you can, really, don't you? Yeah, exactly. So I guess we'll now do the flip side players yep. with a very high break, even and don't get rid of Ollie Wines yet. Ollie Wines is close, but don't get rid of Ollie Wines yet. Fair enough. Um, I'm going to toggle the price up to five fifty for this one yep. um, because these are players that you're paying up for. These are the these are your premiums. Mm -hmm that aren't giving you premium scoring. Um, mm -hmm. And James Sicily is yeah. up there because his game against the Bombers was horrific. He's managed to salvage it a little bit with a 123 last week, but his average is still 83, and his break-even now is 195. Yep. And there's a lot of options around that price that are doing very, very well that aren't in speculative positions, right? Got Tom Stewart never going to get kicked out. Probably never going to get made to be a key defender. Luke Ryan, who I'm bringing in, even a Harry Sheasel if you don't have him. Some of these guys are real options. I know we talked about round one being out of the system next week, but look at his projected break even after that. He's going to drop in a lot of money now, and then next week he's probably going to drop in money as well. So there's a real option that we can get Sicily at like 580K as one of our first upgrades in the back line, if that's something you were looking for. Jump off yeah. him. Don't worry about it. Yep. Uh, Docker is injured, of course. Now, this really hurts. Yeah. Um, I, own, I own this guy. And when you see a break even of 189, like this to me says another way of saying this is he is the third least bang for buck. You know, um, the, third the, th the third worst option. For using yeah. your money essentially. Um, and on that basis, I have to trade him out. A 189, yeah. he's got a 0.0 percent chance of making it, apparently, according to Super Coach. So, yeah, yeah, unless he can pick up the gold after the siren this week, like there, there's probably a chance if he does that. But outside of that happening again, I, I, I just don't see it happening, John, unfortunately. Yeah, so Dawson's gone for me. Uh, Clary. Uh, was tagged last week by Finn McGuinness mm -hmm. to an 82. And mm -hmm. thankfully, that's really good for us because he's going to drop in price. He's not going to even play this week either. So this high break even is still going to stick around for another week. Um, even better for us, which means down the track when we get to upgrade season well and truly, um, he mm -hmm. really could be close to 500K almost, mm -hmm. dare I say. Yeah, and I think he's got one of the later buys as well. So you could offload him now depending on when he comes back. I think they rushed him, to be honest, Joe. Um, I, I think they said, cool, no preseason. Well, yep, you're going to play next week. So, yeah, we'll wait and see what happens. But Clayton Noah, as you say, could be a bit cheaper for us. Yeah. I don't know Nick how many Dacos, people anyway. So no. Nick, Nick Dacos, this, this break even's absolutely jumped up a lot, courtesy of mm -hmm. that 54 that he dished out last week, which was... Terrible. He thought he had to aim for fifty on his in his fiftieth game. He thought he had to aim for fifty super coach points. Um, and had one extra... get a fifty, and it's like what? 
Yeah, exactly. I would have much preferred if you got 50 disposals um, mm -hmm. as opposed to 50 super coach points. So, yeah, Nick Dacos is dropped in cash and his break even is now going to be even higher. Mm -hmm. Having played those three games, his first big game has dropped out and now this 54 is going to be sticking around in his, in his three round average for some time. So, those who didn't start Nick Dacos, congratulations, mm -hmm. your sons are beaches. Um, you're going to enjoy getting him in for a lot cheaper later. Yeah, but I think one of the things is, well, there's a point of view that says get rid of Nick Dacos now. He's obviously had one price decrease already, so you're losing out a little bit. But if you do, you're spending another 100K because that's how much a trade's worth, basically, to get him back in. So just cop the loss. He does have his buy in a couple of weeks. Hopefully the Finn McGuinness tag doesn't hurt him too much. And how cocky Nick Dacos is, I can actually see him going big this week. And just being like, nah, stuff you. You got rid of me and my team. I'm sure Nuffy Collingwood Supercoach fans have messaged him saying, hey, you scored shoot. Like, well, watch out. Watch out versus um Brisbane. So we'll see what happens. Jen, you need to slide into his DMs a little bit, Jen. You got to tell him. Joe and Big J from the center bounce didn't like him. Just, so just bad. Confuse him. Don't, don't actually slide into his DMs. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm, Joe's I'm just kidding. kidding. No, 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 no. I promise I'm kidding. This was a joke, guys. You can see it. a massive smile on my face. We're laughing about it. <laughs> don't do that. Please, please don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Nick Dacos, he'll bounce back. He's a yep. gun. He'll be fine. Don't trade him out. His D1 or D2 doesn't really matter. Um, don't trade him out. So yeah, those I think are the yeah. top five break-even players. Move, and I think down, that move down some of the other options. We'll just have a quick look. Like a few people are potentially getting rid of a Libba. I, I don't know. You can probably keep him. He's still going to be top top position. Um, I don't know if there's anyone else. A lot of people, you know, I've seen a couple of, hey, get rid of Bontepelli's, but, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen either. There's don't crazy people that. out there, Joe. These, these, some of these Facebook teams, they're just like, oh, he's going to lose money. Get out of my side. I'm like, yeah, nah, maybe not. Look. If he plays this week against West Coast, he can, he's easily going 148. Mm. That's true. Same thing with English. If English plays against West Coast, a 148 is not out of the realm's possibility. And the, the big thing is, like, you look at LDU with a 134 break even. Like, players like him are appropriately priced. This is how much he's going to be for a while. Don't jump off him just because his break even's a little bit higher than his average, because he, he's going to be around this mark for the entire time. You picked him for a reason. You know his scoring's there. That's just how it's going to be. Maybe yeah, would you jump off a Rory Laird? Probably not, right? Have a look what what's Rory Laird down there, like one twenty six. Now nah, you keep him as well. So yeah, basically at the hey, this is how much they're priced. You've got them in your same thing with There's the no real value jumping off. Yeah, same thing with the Tom Stewart. He's average 120 and his break even is 121. Like these are players who are just uber consistent yep. with um that are just able to continuously perform to a really high level. They might not have incredible ceilings all the time, but their flaws and their, their consistency keeps their price hovering around that same mark. And that's why I'm I probably should have started Tom Stewart. Um, he's always one of my first pick defenders in my back line, just by virtue of how reliable it is he is at scoring over 100, his yep. price never drops violently. Um, mm -hmm. it, it always takes a suspension or an injury in order for that to happen, and I was sort of banking on that happening, and you never want to bank on an injury. Um, so, But, yeah, these are these are some reliable players. You just don't trade them out. Um, I'm really keen to see Rowan Marshall. I think yep. he's going to be the one that I get to, um, that I flip Grundy to at his buy. He's got a break-in of 129 planet against both Goldie and Draper this week mm -hmm. and could be a pretty fearsome duo. So I'm really hoping they get stuck into Roma a little bit, give him to give us a shit score, uh, and then we can get him in for a bit cheaper down the track yeah. for Grundy. That, that's the dream for me. Everyone's looking for a Grundy downgrade come round five. So it's either English, who we don't know what's going to happen with Darcy, with Lob, that ruck time or potentially Rowan Marshall, or, you know, maybe someone else who kind of pops up out of nowhere. Even a Kieran Briggs who could just be, like, super dirty. We'll see what happens. Yeah, but uh, from from 
I think Briggsy has issues off the off the field, if you know what I mean. Um, in the heart department, sort of a bit of a heartbroken. So That's yeah, I wouldn't go. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that. Um, I think we've gone through just about all of the players, to mm -hmm. be honest, in almost 50 minutes now. So, guys, if you liked what you had to see here today, mm -hmm. a little bit more in-depth, not just the ones that you have to trade in, go on into a little bit, expand it a little bit more to sort of see if we can um, talk to you guys if you own any of these other premiums or you're trying to get some of these other premiums in. Hopefully, this video was really helpful um, in helping you sort of come to grips whether you should trade or hold. Yeah, and this week, as we said, we've emphasised it enough. It's the most crucial week in Supercoach. Players go up and down in price, and you, it's really the last chance time where you don't get punished for rechanging up the structure of your team. So hopefully you guys have watched to the end. We love having you guys here. We'll see you on Monday. We'll see you on Sunday for our team sheets, how, you know, how our teams went, our team reviews, and then Monday for the live stream as well. So stay tuned for those. Don't forget the Thursday 5.30 as well, Big J. Oh, well, that's true. We got the ride home tomorrow, Joe. I almost forgot about it. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. 100%, guys. So make sure if you're new, chuck us a subscription. We'll greatly help the growth of our channel. And if you like what you had to see here, a like. Hit that notification bell to make sure that you don't miss out on any of the videos or streams that we have coming up. Even if we might forget about them, if you hit that notification bell, you won't forget about them. Yeah, I do have to correct myself, guys. There is a Monday game, so after the Monday game, that's when our team reviews are going to be out. And then you might even see them for the live stream, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Big weekend of footy. Happy Easter to everyone. You know, if you don't celebrate Easter, that's okay too, but enjoy the public holidays. Enjoy the time off. Spend time with your family. It's going to be a good weekend. 100%, guys, because here at the Centre Bounce, we do the hard work that so you don't have to. Bye, Bye for now.